EchoHive Image Contest is a A-B testing platform web app. You just simply upload your images. Let's select this, this, and this. There we go. And then all we have to do is here, we can actually enter a purpose and select number of votes. Let's say the purpose for this contest is an image best representing a website about AI. Let's get uh, actually 30 votes and just run the contest. And simultaneous GPT-40 mini calls now is going to rate these three images. And here we started getting uh, responses. We currently have only one vote. Uh, as the votes accumulate, we have our averages here planned. So far, this is winning. Actually, let's see what happens at the end of uh, the vote. The first one and the second one is actually pretty close. And here we go. We got our winner. Uh, it decided that this image is the best one. This one is the second one. Here it said that this image effectively represents a concept related to AI through into brain intertwined with cosmic elements, which is interesting. Uh, you can also, uh, let's refresh and try another one. We can also just upload images. We can also drag the images in. Uh, for example, let's do archive breakthrough synthesizers. You can use it to choose thumbnails. You can you don't have to enter the contest purpose. Let's now just run it with ten votes. So essentially, the idea is that if you are in between images for different purposes, maybe for marketing or YouTube, you know, social media thumbnails or something like that, you can use this. To get GPT-40 Mini to uh, rate it for you, you can also, of course, use different models. Here we are using GPT-40 Mini. This is a fast API web app. Uh, at first, it goes slowly, and then uh, it speeds up because we are making async calls. Since they are writing out, uh, since we are making image calls here, this is the winner by a, with 8.8 .8 points. And this one actually got last. Maybe I'll use this actually to choose my thumbnail. So this is, in a nutshell, how it works. You can actually download it from my Patreon. It's a fast API web app. Uh, you can download it by becoming a patron. And all you have to do is just run the main.py file, and it'll run it at this host in port 8001. I'll actually change it to 8000. Well, whatever port, it doesn't really matter. It'll print it in the terminal anyway. OK. So it mainly consists of the main.py and openaiservice.py file. Uh, and then we have some CSS for styling and JavaScript. I'll let my AI code explainer explain the CSS uh, animations.js and the index. But I'll go ahead and talk about the main.py and openai service. Let's start with openai service.py. We are just getting our openai API key. And we are going to use GPT-40 mini, but you can choose to use regular GPT-40 if you like, or alter it entirely if you want to change the base URL, maybe use a local model or cloud models. And here we're going to use OpenAI, async OpenAI library. And we are also using moderation for this. So essentially, uh, we are moderating these images as well. Now, if you're running it to yourself, maybe you don't need to do that, but I thought it was a good idea to do that. And we are using the Omni moderation latest, which can moderate both text and images. When you build a web app uh, that's going to be front or public facing, you do want to have some kind of moderation, obviously. OK, so this is our moderation. We just convert the image to a base64 and just pass it to moderation, the moderation. And we are using asyncio.gather for all the images at the same time. But essentially, it's going to either return flagged or not. If it's not flagged, then we are good to go. And rate images is also going to take an uh, image of base 64s. Uh, and then it's going to, this is a function to get uh, multiple images. And this is the uh, rate single image function. You're an expert image judge contest. We are using JSON mode just to show you. Okay. And the system message is you can modify it, but rate the image based on given criteria for general contests, evaluate overall artistic and technical merit. Essentially, uh, provide ratings in a JSON format by judging it by technical quality, creativity, relevance, overall impact, and then there's an explanation also. And if there is a contest purpose that has been entered into the website when you upload the files, 
then it will we'll actually pass that to the as the to the user message for the following purpose right here. And then we just make our calls again. Our images we pass one by one um, simultaneously, of course. And then we get the uh, calculate average rating. We get that and rated for rating is rating. We keep adding it to the rating, and then um, we average it out. Here, the average rating for each key, and then uh, we assign it. So that is pretty much it in a nutshell, uh, talking about the main functions. And here, uh, we're going to set the max images to three, and we're going to have an upload directory where we're going to upload the images. And uh, we define our fast API, mount our static files, and the template, which is going to be our index.html right here. And we create a, a WebSocket connection. That's going to be our connection manager. And we make the manager uh, that function. And we have our home route, the main route, which is just going to return a template response of index.html, which is our main page. When you refresh the page, that is going to be what you see. Oh, our server is not running. Uh, but if you run the server, that is what you're going to see. And I'll show you how to run it as well. When you run it, this URL is going to print here. You can control click on it. And this is our main page, index.html. And we also have a slash contest endpoint, which is going to take in the uploaded files, the contest purpose, and number of votes. And essentially, uh, just add it to the list and pass it to moderate images, which we have seen in OpenAI service.py. Okay. And then, um, and then we're going to call the rate images with updates. And then we're going to return the results. And the rest of the stuff is going to be handled in the animation.js uh, and in index.html. And we also have the uh, WebSocket endpoint to um, uh, receive and return the responses. And uh, just to show you, so remember we uh, did that manager.broadcast results. If you remember, our manager was the connection manager, and that is the one that is creating our uh, WebSocket connections. Okay, so like I said, I hope you like this. You can download it from my Patreon by becoming a patron. When you do become a patron, you not only get access to this project file, but also over 350 other projects. You can find all my projects at my website, echohive.live. You can watch the videos for free. Uh, and you'll find the convenient download code button. If you're a patron, just scroll through. And if you see a project that you like, like translating long documents, just click on this. It'll take you to Patreon. You can download the code. Also check out my 1000X Cursor course, in which over 28 chapters, over 19 hours of content, with which I build projects from scratch using Cursor. Very useful if you're interested in uh, wanting to learn Cursor better. So now uh, I also have an AI code explainer, which is going to explain the styles, uh, index, HTML, JavaScript, and the uh, CSS files. If you like the AI code explainer, you can also download it from my Patreon as well. Okay, thank you. I'll see you in the next video. This part of the code is the structural backbone of the EchoHive image contest application. It's an HTML document structured to create a dark-themed, responsive web page where users can upload images and configure a contest. It uses external styles and scripts to enhance user interface. Thank Tailwind, Daisy UI, and AnimeJS for that. The HTML includes components such as file upload area, complete with a drag-and-drop feature for uploading images. Only up to three images, because less is more, right? Contest configuration, a hidden section becoming visible when images are uploaded, where users can specify the contest purpose and determine voting parameters. Loading animation and results section, initially hidden, these sections show up when running and completing a contest. Overall, this HTML lays the foundational structure and appearance, integrating various UI UX elements essential for an interactive image contest. In this segment of the JavaScript file, we have a delightful orchestration of event handling magic designed to provide a dynamic and responsive user experience for the image upload area of the contest page. Key elements include drag and drop handling. This section manages everything drag and drop. 
It prevents unwanted default behaviors and highlights the drop area when files are dragged over it. It's like rolling out a red carpet for your images. File processing. Once images are either dropped or selected using the file input, this part of the code reads the files and previews them by inserting predefined HTML structures with animation effects, thanks to anime.js. The viewer gets a beautiful transition effect each time an image is previewed. Contest configuration display. If all goes well and images are successfully uploaded, the contest configuration panel unfurls in all its glory, allowing users to define contest parameters. This section facilitates image interaction, ensuring user satisfaction right from their first interaction with the website. Here we delve into the meaty part of running the contest. Let's gear up and let the contest running begin right with the click of the Run Contest button. Event Listener for Contest Execution. It starts when a user decides to run the contest. The script collects inputs like contest purpose and desired number of votes while gathering the uploaded images. File handling and verification. It checks if images exist. If there are none, it gently nudges users with an alert to upload some images. After all, a contest isn't much fun with zero participants. Loading and data submission. With the contest set to go, the script momentarily hides the configuration section and reveals a loading animation, par for the course during a suspenseful image judgment process. Form data construction and submission. This stage creates a form data object packing up our data, contest purpose, votes, images, and then hands it off to the server for backend processing using fetch. The server's response is intercepted to update the UI accordingly, ensuring a seamless experience. This section ensures that the user inputs are collected, verified, submitted, and a responsive server interaction is handled beautifully, setting up the contest for behind-the-scenes magic and ultimate result display. This segment introduces WebSocket functionality to the application, adding a real-time feedback loop from the server to the client. Think of it as the backstage crew updating us about the ongoing results of your image contest. WebSocket connection establishes a connection to the server for continuous communication. It's akin to a hotline for receiving updates promptly as the images are judged. Handling server messages. When the server sends update messages, as votes are being counted or images are scored, the script parses these alerts to adjust the displayed progress and interim results. Reconnect logic. When the connection drops, like a brief power nap for the internet, the app attempts a graceful reconnection, ensuring seamless updates. This part keeps the continuous assessment of images and keeps the users in the loop in real time, making the entire process interactive and engaging. This stylish segment is dedicated to displaying the results of the image contest, a showcase of who takes home the virtual prize and maybe a new desktop wallpaper. Results display. Once results are calculated, they are displayed in a visually engaging grid with animations, courtesy of Anime.js, to make it clear and exciting to view. Users can see scores in categories like technical quality, creativity, and the crowd favorite overall impact. Dynamic UI updates shows results progressively with nifty animations, keeping the user glued to their screens. Interim result support updates can be displayed progressively or finally when all data is ready. By emphasizing smooth interactions and clear presentation, this section ensures that users are not only informed about the contest outcome, but also thrilled by the engaging aesthetics. The styles in this snippet focus on making the Echo Hive image contest site not only functional, but visually stunning. A blend of animations and design choices enhance user engagement and aesthetics. Gradient background. It employs a flowing gradient animation to give the backdrop a dynamic feel like the soothing sky on a breezy day. Upload area and glow effect. Hover effects, border styles, and text glow infuse the interface with elegance, inviting users to interact. The upload area has a dashed border that subtly changes on hover, guiding users naturally to interact. Animation effects. These CSS animations ensure that visuals are inherently pleasing, with elements either fading in or out, or backgrounds that animate over time. These styles ensure a consistent, modern theme that keeps users visually interested and interacting smoothly with the interface. 
I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Right now, listen to me. I've been trying to code, and you know, like I like coding. The fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I heard about it. It's easy. So, um, I came across Thousand X Cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just it just worked, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, Thousand X, you're coding. 